let me say just a little bit more about the style of housing that we are developing and the legal structure for it, as well as the financial strategies. So we call this the village model. Uh, it's a combination of using community land trust and housing co-ops. So just a, a, a word about housing co-ops. Um, because they've been around for a long time, especially on the East Coast, I think a little more common, um, where apartment buildings have been converted into co-ops. And typically the tenants band together, pool their resources, purchase the building, take out a mortgage, and then they own that building. Uh, and housing co-ops a little different from condominiums where you own your apartment. In this case, if there are 100 apartments, you buy the building, everybody owns one one hundredth of everyone else's apartment. Um, and then you combine that with a community land trust, also something that's been around for a long time, used for a whole variety of purposes, basically any public good from preserving natural areas to supporting civic organizations and creating affordable housing. And the basic idea is that the land trust is the steward of the land and ensures that it is used for the benefit of the community in perpetuity. And when you combine the community land trust with a housing co-op, you take the cost of the land out of the equation. So instead of paying for that cost of the land, the co-op only has to pay then for the cost of the housing, and then they pay a, a modest fee for the ground lease. And the community land trust can set that fee at whatever level they desire. If it's well-funded, it can be as low as a dollar a year. Uh, but more importantly, the land trust then sets the, the terms for those structures. So in our case, we want to keep affordable house, housing affordable. So we use the limited equity co-op that sets the limit on the value of the shares in the co-op uh, so that if housing prices skyrocket, someone can't just go out and sell their membership um, to the highest bidder on the free market. And nor can the co-op decide to collectively cash in to sell their project to a developer. And this actually has happened, especially in New York, uh, where you had these apartment buildings converted to the co-ops, uh, you know, back in the 50s, housing prices skyrocket, they see a chance to cash in, they just sell the whole thing, move out um, and, uh, you know, cash out. And now that project is no longer affordable. So the community land trust prevents that uh, from happening. Um, so the village model then just in one image here, if you start with the land trust there at the bottom of the image, um, the land trust uh, leases the property to the co-op, provide it's the steward for permanent affordability. And, and very importantly, it provides training to the co-op members. And this is one of the things I've learned in doing this work is most people come into our projects and they're used to being a, rent, a renter. They know how to do that. They know how to be a tenant. What they don't know is how to be a landlord because now they are the landlord as well as the tenant. And uh, so you have to train people on that process. And the co-op, the housing that's on that property uh, then that leases from the land trust and provides that affordable monthly payment uh, and the limited equity to the residents. And, and of course the goal to keep it affordable is then to operate at cost. So there's no profit margin built into this. Uh, so that's part of what also keeps it affordable. And then, and then, of course, they operate through a democratic process, electing their board members, making the decisions, and so forth. And, and that, too, also sometimes takes a little bit of education. Uh, so three primary benefits to the structure that, uh, first of all, uh, we believe very strongly that resident-owned housing is always, or at least almost always, preferable to rental housing for a number of reasons. It increases financial stability. It gives the resident a stake in the property. Therefore, they're much more likely to take care of it. It allows the residents to build at least modest equity depending upon the level of equity. And actually in our C Street project, there the equity will equal the value of the improvements, the housing itself. So in that case, um, it's a much more significant equity. Um, and it gives them more control over their housing and, and their future. And secondly, uh, unlike some affordable housing projects, especially those uh, financed with tax credits where you just have a private developer, at the end of the period dictated by that financial mechanism, they can turn around and convert it into market rate housing. So in our, in our case, uh, the housing will remain affordable in perpetuity through that structure of the community land trust. 
And finally, it's a low risk investment. Um, and a lot of studies have shown that co-op housing actually is uh, lower risk than uh, private housing, that the default rate is lower because you have all these different households who are invested into its success. One person has difficulty, they rally around that person. Um, it doesn't threaten the entire project. And uh, finally, I'll say just a little bit more about um, then some of the financial strategies. So first of all, if we start on the left-hand side of this graph with the community land trust, there are a variety of ways that you can fund the purchase of the property. Um, talk to your city about community development, um, CDBG uh, grants. Uh, talk to Oregon Housing and Services uh, about uh, possible funding sources. Uh, we chose to do it through fundraising. Uh, we have purchased all of our property up to date just, just by uh, fundraising and, and occasionally with some grants as well. Uh, it's just simpler in many ways. It's a lot of work, but you don't have to go through um, some of the processes that you have to do to get public funding. Um, and then once you have the land, then financing the improvements and particularly for any group that is not experienced at doing housing development, we recommend working with a development partner and, and especially someone who has experience uh, working with banks, uh, working with Oregon Housing and Services Commissions, which is the primary provider in the state for uh, housing grants, uh, doing things like uh, low-income housing tax credits, um, and then also just other fundraising uh, that you might do to cover the, the gap uh, if the other sources aren't sufficient. And then the residents themselves. So there's different ways to structure this. Uh, but depending on the income level of the residents, uh, where they purchase their share, uh, one way to do it, if you said uh, we're looking at in one of our projects of a share value at $5,000. Well, most low income households aren't going to have $5,000 available. But there are programs, in particular, the IDA program, where low income people, if they're signed up for an IDA account, they're setting aside money, $100 a month kind of thing that gets matched through that program. Uh, I think it's three to one, uh, maybe more than that now, um, so that their dollars are, are multiplied, that's set aside. It, that those dollars can only be used for housing and for a few other purposes, uh, but people in IDA programs might have the, uh, sufficient money that they could put that $5,000 down. Uh, we're looking to do that in our C Street project, for instance, um, or setting up a revolving loan fund um, where the residents pay into that and then that must be used to finance someone else's membership share down the road, other homeowner assistant programs. But encouraging in some way, developing a way that uh, so that those future residents of the program are actually also contributing to the cost to it, even if uh, it's a small amount. Uh, finally, uh, just some of the resources that we have uh, available on our website at squareonevillages.org. There is what we call our toolbox that has uh, a list of resources. And then we have a new website called The Village Model. It's actually the, the address is villagemodel.org without the the in front of it um, that has a lot more. Uh, on it. Uh, we developed this website with support from Meyer Memorial Trust and uh, there are some articles that go into great length uh, describing this whole model of the Community Land Trust and the limited, limited equity co-op.